This is the Sidu C75HE keyboard that Epo Maker sent me a while back. I've been meaning to make a video about this keyboard for quite some time now, but I always pushed it back since on paper performance wise, it is not that impressive. But I just recently started using this thing more since I accidentally poured some coffee on my Nafi board and I've been actually quite impressed with this thing. So this thing costs $140 from Epo Maker and it has the Gatoron Mac magnetic white switches has a really sturdy aluminium case and honestly is very nicely built the case itself is very clean looking with these bronze colored uh, side pieces and a bottom plate that have this black pattern on them what i really like about this case design is this front corner here for some reason it just looks very clean to my eyes another thing that i like is even though this is a 75% keyboard, it is a very compact one, so my 60% keep mat works with it nicely. I also like this little LED bar here, and uh, I was very pleased to find you can change its color in the driver. It is a bit hidden there, but it's there, luckily. Also, the very nicely done keycaps with the orange escape key together with the black case are just very pleasing to my eye. These keycaps are Dizap PBT, but the plastic here is very thick. It is much thicker than I'm used to seeing in these budget boards. So from the outside, everything seems spot on and very good for a board at this price point. It is also pretty heavy with around 2 kilograms of mass. The switches they have chosen here are the Gatoron Whites, so the KS20U switches, and they feel very nice on this board. There is like no need to loop this board and you can get a really nice thocky typing sound straight out of the box. I took this board apart quickly to see what they have done really inside here to make this board sound this good and, and there is really nice stuff found inside. There is a thin layer of case foam and then you can see just how thick these foam layers are on the model itself. Mounting method they have done here is the top mount instead of the gasket mount Epo Maker has mentioned on their website. It is a very nicely made here and while it won't provide as good vibration reduction and typing feel softness the gasket mounting method does, it is still very well done for a whole effect keyboard. The plate material is also nicely chosen to be polycarbonate instead of aluminium to provide some nice additional poppiness to the typing sound. And yeah, here is a quick sound test about this board. Then let's talk about the performance of this board. So this thing is capable of 8000Hz polling, but it is still scanning at 1000Hz. So what those numbers mean is that the board is sending the data to your computer at a 8000Hz rate, but it is still checking internally what keys are pressed at the 1000Hz rate. This basically means that you won't get as low latency as you would with the upcoming Wooding ADHE or other high performance boards. But how much does it actually matter in your use it is a completely different topic talking about the features the board has of course adjustable actuation points rapid trigger dynamic restrokes mod tap and toggle key and the last three of these are something that i haven't even used personally since they just allow you to select your keys to do different stuff based on the actuation distance or if you are pressing or holding down the key i have basically set my WASD keys to 0.1 millimeters and other keys except my Superglide key bindings I have set to 2 millimeters pretty much. I found that the actuation points feel quite similar to my Wooting and I could pretty much set the same actuation points to my crouch which is V and the spacebar 
and I've really not noticed any difference in my super glide consistency with this board. The rapid trigger I have set to the most sensitive setting on my WASD and pretty much every other key I have set it off to avoid mispresses. It is not the most responsive rapid trigger and there seems to be some dead zone even on the most sensitive setting but it is still very usable. Also there is no continuous rapid trigger setting here so keep that in mind but for my settings it doesn't matter since my WASD is also on the lowest setting so the continuous mode would not even do anything here a quick word about the software also it is honestly pretty confusing so it can take some time for you to navigate through this but yeah uh, those are my settings and honestly for this price this keyboard is really nice does it offer anything exceptional performance and feature wise no but it is a very nicely built Hall Effect keyboard with some nice switches and a very nice typing experience. Um, yeah, I think that is all for this video. Thanks for watching and see you next week. Goodbye.